Welcome to another Power BI tutorial from Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland. In today's episode, I would like to show report creators how to achieve that perfect alignment when it comes to visuals on our canvas. A nicely formatted report page can significantly increase understandability of each element and how they fit into the story we are trying to tell. Therefore, it will be easier for our report users to interact with the report and we can provide a much better user interface. I'm going to cover a couple of different methods on aligning visuals on a report page. And to make it easier, I edit them some times. I edit some timestamps below. I would suggest checking out all of them, but if you're familiar with one or two, you can just skip to the next one. Hello, this is future me. While I was editing this video, I realized that it would be too long to be published as a single episode and to make sure that the second half of it gets as much attention as the first one, I'm going to edit out some bits and post more advanced setups a week later. But before we jump into the details, please drop a like to this video and hit the subscribe button. Clicking on the bell icon will bring you good luck. As I do not want to talk too much this time without showing Power BI, let's head over to my PC and discover our options. For this demo, I have three elements to use, called Visual Element 1, 2 and 3. Throughout this video, I will use card visuals to demonstrate the different features, but you can easily replicate these alignment methods with any other and any number of visuals. Feel free to practice. The first method is going to be the simplest way of aligning visuals. It is also probably something that many of you have seen or used before. Let's add visual element number one to this page. If I start moving this card around on the report page, you will see a red dotted line. That is going to be our visual guide. If I only have a single report element on the page, this red dotted line is going to help me to find the middle of the page, both horizontally and vertically. It is really neat as we can easily place items in the middle of the canvas and start building our visual blocks around them. Let's place this card to the left and somewhere around the top of the screen so that middle line is not going to show up. Let's add visual element number two as well and see what changes. We can easily align the top and bottom or the sides of these visuals just by following the red dotted line. Not only that, but if I want to place these two visuals side by side, I can also use the line to reveal the imaginary border. And finally, if we would like to create some sort of a tile or shifted look, we can also align the bottom of the first card to the middle of the second card. Something like this. All of this without turning on borders under the formatting panel and without losing our eyesight by trying to find the right pixel location. Under the view section of the ribbon, we can turn on grid lines. Let's pick up two cards. These lines can help us, report creators, to align visuals on a report page easily. If I want to make sure that I place both visual element 1 and visual element 2 to the same distance from the top of the page, they can guide me in doing that. I would say that the main benefit of using the grid lines is that we can identify the location of the visual relative to the report page, while the red dotted lines can help us to identify location relative to other visual elements. 
Personally, I'm not a huge fan of grid lines as they could be a bit confusing or distracting because those light grey lines are not always easy to spot. It is going to be especially tricky to find them if you have a colored background or a background image like what I have here. But I can definitely see the point of having them available here in Power BI as in some cases they provide a good reference point. Once you align your visuals neatly on the canvas, I would suggest clicking on or enabling the lock objects mode on the top. Too many times I have fall victim of wanting to explore my report and in desktop, I moved visuals across the page. And it could be a painful exercise to place a single visual back to its original location, especially when you have overlaps or visuals on top of each other. Let me start by adding visual element number 2 to this page. Once we select the visual element we want to align, we can see the format panel on the ribbon. Under this option, we have the align button. We can easily align a visual to the left or center or right. This is going to move the visual horizontally. Additionally, using the Align Top, Middle or Bottom buttons, we can move the visual vertically. This way, we can easily, quickly and most importantly, precisely move our visuals around. But hold on, these buttons can do more. Let me add visual element number 3. and just slightly change the width of it to be able to demonstrate the next option. If we select both visuals, those align buttons are no longer going to reference page level location. Once multiple visual elements are selected, the align buttons are going to help us to align visuals relative to one and other. This is actually one of my favorite ways to quickly place visuals to the right place. I don't have to drag and drop elements on the canvas, no need to worry about the red dotted line, just a couple of clicks and I have a perfect alignment. And once again, we can align horizontally or vertically and these buttons work with multiple visual elements as well. Isn't this great? This option is crucial to get that balanced look and feel. We need at least three visual elements to get this working, so let me grab all three elements. Let's just shake it up and reposition all three of them. Once that's done, let's select all three and again head over to the format panel. First, I'm going to align middle and after that I can click on the distribute horizontally button. Now the space between visual element 1 and 2 is going to be exactly the same as the gap between 2 and 3. No need to start measuring pixels and hope for the best. Within a single click, Power BI will evenly distribute the elements in the middle. Even if we have more than just one, we can also create a nice vertical distribution by clicking on the Distribute Vertically button.
But the best part is, we don't have to worry about making sure that all elements are in line. We can also do a shifted distribution. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This could provide some great visual effects, especially if there is some sort of a logical flow for visual elements on our report page. We are now looking at some advanced level alignment. I'm going to need all three cards again, so let me quickly copy them over here. So far, we haven't tried to place these cards on top of each other, or in other words, trying to create overlapping visual elements. It can be useful in some scenarios, let's say when we want to bake in a slicer into a bar chart. But how do we even know what sort of a layer order we have here? Let's click on the view pane on the ribbon and selection. Here we can see that on the top we have card number 3, below that card number 2, and on the bottom card number 1. This is going to be our layering setup. So if I place card number 2 over card 1, card 2 will be on top. And if I place card 3 over the stack, it is going to sit on the top. From here on, we can drag and drop in the selection pane the visuals to change layer options. Or we can use these little triangles here to adjust the z-axis position. And finally, I can also click on the format panel on the ribbon and use bring forward or send backwards button. Bring forward or send backward will adjust the position in the 3D space by one unit, while bring to the front or send to the back will place the visual to the absolute top or bottom. Again, neat little feature, huh? To be able to demonstrate this feature, I only need one of the elements. Let's use visual element number 3, as we hardly use that one. It also deserves it its 15 seconds of fame. Under the visualization panel, let's click on the format button and expand general options. If you are looking for that pixel perfect alignment, but you don't want to use the previous methods, you can also use the X and Y position listed here. For obvious reasons, this is not my preferred method. However, from time to time, I use it just to make sure that all visual elements are in perfect alignment. It is extremely useful when I already added a background image and cannot see the red dotted line or the grid lines. Or in case when I don't want to or cannot use the align buttons, for example there is nothing to align to or I need to create something a bit more funky. And as a bonus tip for those who stay till the very end, did you know that it is possible to adjust the size of the visual under the general formatting options. Here we have width and height and these are important measures especially if you need to place two or more same sized visuals on the canvas. You don't need to worry about dragging the sides or the corner of the second visual, just copy paste the values and Bob's your uncle. Alright, so just a quick recap. 
we covered six different ways to get the perfect alignment within Power BI report, starting from a simple dotted line to the most complex pixel-driven positioning. Not to mention those two quick pro tips about locking objects and adjusting visual sizes. Luckily, Power BI Desktop offers a wide variety of built-in alignment options, and we don't have to be graphic designers to create a perfectly balanced visual distribution for our report pages. If you have a preferred way of aligning visuals or learned a new method to easily align the visual elements on your report, let me know down in the comment section below. Hey, this is Future Me again. As I mentioned before, the unedited version of this video turned out to be too long. So next week, I'm going to cover some more advanced alignment options or tools and show you how to create templates to guide other report creators within your organization. Essentially making their lives easier by not worrying about alignment and even design considerations. It will look something like Excel, PowerPoint or Word templates. So do not forget to come back or check that one as well. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something new today. Make sure to test all these methods and let me know which one you like the most. Stay tuned for more to come. See ya.